Thank you for listening to the Golden Hour Drip podcast with me, Logan Lee Miller. Enjoy the show. Welcome back to the Golden Hour Drip podcast. Happy Friday. Oh, it's been such a nice, I was going to say long, but it's actually kind of short because I had the 4th of July off. I'm not sure if you did too. I hope that you did. If you didn't, hey, I appreciate you going out and getting that work done, right? Okay, so um, short, sweet, little week for me. Um, I am looking forward to the weekend. Don't get me wrong, though. I feel like the 4th of July weekend can either like hit or miss. If you have like friends and family like wanting to celebrate, it can hit. But if you don't have any plans, it's like, oh gosh, like what are we doing? Nothing, right? Anyways, um, happy 4th of July or happy 4th of July weekend since yesterday was the 4th of July, okay? So I um, have a great episode for you today. Make sure you rate, review, subscribe, all of the things. It literally helps the show more than you know, and I would appreciate it so much. We also have a visual on YouTube. So if you would prefer to watch your podcast, hey, I'm here, you're here, we can stare at each other. So let's get into it. Today is an Ask the Gals episode, which means I read submissions from viewers and listeners. If you have a question or a, you know, situation that you need a little help, a little insight on, you can submit your story at golden hour drip on Instagram or golden hour drip at gmail.com. If you want to send it via email, let's get into it. I graduated high school this May and start college in the fall. Currently, I'm undecided and need to pick a major ASAP. I thought I'd be able to figure it out, but with only a month left until school starts, I'm feeling more lost than ever. Understandable. Okay, I feel like there's so much pressure put on which major you should do or um, picking your career. And when you're 17, 18, 19 years old, it's very hard to like come up with the direction, right? I feel like high school is so regimented and with like good parents, I'm not sure with your parents, but like my parents were pretty like strict in that aspect of like, they knew where I was going at all times. I had a bedtime, I had a curfew, I had like certain things that I had to do, right? And so to go (laughs) from that to, okay, you're in college, pick your entire life career, like you have limited control of your life when you're like in your family's home, right? Um, not good, not bad. That's just how it happens, right? They're cooking you supper. Maybe you had choice. You could, you know, go eat somewhere. I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> traditionally, parents um, and children, you know, the parent directs the life of the child. And then all of a sudden, it seems like, oh, when you turn a certain age, (laughs) you are now responsible for yourself, okay? And you have to make these huge life decisions. If you go to college, um, you're taking out loans, you're applying for student aid, you might be living for the first time by yourself or with a roommate who is not your sister or your brother. Um, you're also like locking into a major and then trying to pick your entire career, your entire life. And that just simply is ridiculous pressure for no reason. You do not have to know what you want to do. I feel like society puts such an emphasis on who you're going to be and what you are before you even have time to develop and and change and morph into that person. Ultimately, life experiences is going to give you more direction the older you get, right? Like you you try something and you think, oh, I like that. Oh, I didn't like that. Yes, that lights me up. No, that drags me out. I hate people. I love people. I like working in groups. I don't like working in groups. And I, if your college has it, I would stick with undecided. Because undecided, or at least at my university, you were able to take a class that opened you up to other careers and they would spend like every so couple days on like a career or like a field and a major and then you were able to pick it afterwards. And I feel like that is such a better way of looking at things because 
your major, yes, it is important, right? Like, especially if you are specific, if you do like, no, I want to be a doctor. Okay, well, you got to start getting organic chem in there and preparing for med school. But if you want a career in sales or marketing, or you want to be a teacher, like those are very important jobs. But you still you have some like wiggle room, right? You can take um, bowling or um, I keep wanting to say skydiving, but we had like snorkeling. Um, so those electives like won't be as like impactful, like they won't matter as much. Still great life experience, still well-rounded, all of those amazing, cool things. But to an extent, like you're allowed to explore and experiment with different hobbies and different jobs, right? And so I wouldn't get so pigeonholed and picking a major. I know they like to have you pick a major within like your first year. Maybe college is not the route. Maybe if you're feeling so indecisive, you can delay college for a year. You can start in the industry somewhere and try different things. You don't have to go a single route. And I feel like so many people are guided this way where you have to know everything and you don't you don't and even when you think that you know everything that's when you are done right like that's when you are in such a still mindset that you're not looking for growth and opportunity and if you're not growing if you're not changing you're dying and I would rather continuously explore and look for other options Because when you think you know everything, you know nothing at all. It's when you continuously learn and open up your mind. And even if you um, try something and it ends up not being what you want to do for the rest of your life, that's okay. You're able to change and pivot and, uh, and try something different, try something new. You can pick something and you can switch it, right? Like nothing says you are locked into that for life. You can change and, and maybe you go to a trade school. Maybe you try something for a while and you decide you hate it and shift to something else. I would not let anybody in your life or, or even, you know, teachers, social media, other students from your class, I wouldn't allow them to have any sort of pressure or influence over making a decision quickly because this is your life. And Uh, If you're wanting more proactive steps and finding, you know, what you want to go to school for, I would start trying things immediately. I would start um, looking for different jobs. I would look for, you know, can I shadow someone for a day, right? Like real estate, like can I shadow you for a day or a teacher or any career? I you can look, you can find on LinkedIn, um, you know, email them, say, Hey, like, I would love to just like watch you for the day. Can I shadow, um, before picking my internship, your instructors and professors will also have like some insight on who you can shadow or maybe it's them or, or getting some insight. I always, always, always recommend the book, the defining decade. I think it is such an impactful and inspiring book and really gives direction to those who are, unsure or a little, you know, on the fence on what they want to do. It's the life experiences and it's trying new things that are going to get you in the right direction. So don't be afraid to take a year off or try something for a little bit and decide that you don't like it. You can always change. You can always pivot. And even if you go to school for something, when you graduate, you don't have to go in that field. I mean, it might feel wasteful, but no experience is ever wasteful. It's always getting you to the right direction. Hey, I hope that you're enjoying today's podcast episode. Just a quick interruption to let you know that the Golden Hour Drip podcast has a monthly newsletter. You'll find podcast updates, upcoming events and information, and bonus content. If you haven't already, click the link in the show notes and join today. Now, back to the show. My best friend went to a grandparents for the summer. Usually we hang out and plan 
a fun summer, but with her gone, I'm worried it's going to be so boring. I have no other friends from home and don't want to feel like this summer was wasted. Okay, summer camp. I feel like I <laughs> romanticized summer camp growing up. I always wanted to be one of the kids who got to go to summer camp um, for like the entire summer. I think that's so fun and it's very it's camp, right? Like it's, it's fun. It's new experiences. It's getting a little bit of independence from your parents. And while you're stuck at home, just think of all the fun. This might be so sad for you. Think of all the fun, exciting things that your um, friend is getting to do. And then they can bring back those stories and talk to you about them, right? Like it's so boring when you do the same thing day in and day out and what you can do is feel happy for that friend and be like oh like she got to have so many fun experiences um and she'll bring those stories um to the table when she sees you right now your goal is to have just as many stories to tell her when she gets back as well not in a competition way but more in like hey you grew this summer I also tried to grow push myself out of my comfort zone and do things that maybe you wouldn't normally do with your friend. I feel like our friends can sometimes keep us limited because it's comfortable and we always do the same thing. So if every Sunday you guys go and get ice cream um, down at, you know, Main Street or whatever, maybe try something new. Maybe don't do the same things that you guys would have done together or you can even experience it in a different way this time individually. I know every time I go to like a, a party or an event or a gathering with a friend or a couple of friends, I know that I'm stagnant. I'm hanging out with them. I'm just visiting with them. I'm talking with them. But if I'm able to do something independent, if I'm able to like go to an event by myself, I know that I'm going to be way more proactive and meeting other people. I'm going to strike up more conversations. And overall, like I'm going to have a more impactful experience than if I would have just like went with my friend and hung out in the corner. So use this time as an opportunity to get out of your comfort zone and meet new people, not to replace your friend, but instead to enhance your life and enhance your friendship, um, to have your own stories. It's no fun sitting at home thinking everyone is having a better summer than you and you have to be in the same old, same old. Push yourself out of your comfort zone. Go to things by yourself and meet new friends. Also, who else in your town? And I know that you said you don't have any friends at home, but who else is like in the situation that you are? Who else is like sitting at home thinking, oh gosh, I have no friends. Like I wish I could go have fun with someone find that person, right? Like go to the library, rent some books. Maybe someone else is at the library, go to the pool. Like there are so many different ways that you can go and, and meet new people. And you don't necessarily have to be stuck in the same routine or the same cycle. Think of this as an opportunity to learn and grow who you are as a person differently than if you would have had your friend had that comfort zone and done all the same things that you did last year. So be happy for your friend that she gets to go to her grandparents for a little camp situation to bond, to have fun and to do all the things. And then you get to have your own solo adventure. I feel like if we romanticize doing things solo more, we would just bloom as individuals. We'd be able to have our confidence grow and, and meet new people and be put in more interesting situations than if we were just like, oh, whispering to our friends in a corner or on our cell phone, like texting them like, oh my gosh, I wish you were here. Like, don't even think about it that way. Have the mindset of this summer is solo and I'm going to make it the best summer yet. I work at a coffee shop part-time to save extra money and feel like it's time to change it up. How do I tell my boss I want to quit? Telling a boss that you are essentially like done working is so difficult, right? And the question comes to mind, like, are you going to be putting in a two weeks? Are you quitting on the spot? What are your reasons for quitting? Is it just like, a growth opportunity aspect that you're like looking for something different, whatever your reasoning is, be upfront and honest with your boss. Um, say, Hey, you know, I really love it here. I always like to highlight the happy things that happen. So if I really learned, uh, from this boss or mentor, be like, I'm so happy that I was able to 
learn how to schedule properly or how to manage my time effectively or how to work with customers or, um, you know, any of the skills that you picked up during our j- your time at this job. And whatever that, like, manager helped you with, like, saying, hey, I really appreciate your nurturing, your guidance through this time. I think um, I'm looking to grow more in my next position and you've set me up perfectly. Um, I got this job at, you know, XYZ company. I'm putting in my two weeks. I've loved it here, but I'm ready for the next chapter. You know, putting it in a mind frame like that is super nice and kind and helpful and will make you feel good. Now, if it was more of like a toxic workplace situation where you don't feel like your manager and you see I and eye to eye anymore they are a little upset with them or or maybe they've done something to lose your trust or you know not make you feel like you have good vibes I would still keep it positive polite and professional because ultimately like you don't want to burn any bridge and my favorite thing is to remain confident in your character and don't buckle for someone else's bad behavior. Um, if they're, you know, crazy or yelling or anything like this goes with bosses, this goes with friends, this goes with family. Like the best thing to do is to keep your cool and feel good about your character and how it shined through. Even if that other person is like grumpy or mean or, you know, toxic or any of the things, it's always better to be polite um, because Ultimately, like they're going to fault you for (laughs) having good character or, you know, removing yourself from a situation that's not not kind, not um, serving you in the best way possible. Like, yeah, they can be bad, but you don't have to like feel bad about the situation. I feel like when you leave um, a job or whatever, people always ask like, oh, like, was it so bad? Or "Um, what made you leave? Or, oh, I thought you'd be there forever. Maybe you live in a small town. Maybe everybody talks and they're like, oh, yeah, I went in. You weren't at the ice cream shop anymore. You weren't at the coffee shop. What happened? Like they always want to dig up like some sort of drama or, um, you know, dirt on someone else. You don't you don't have to succumb to that. You don't have to feed into that energy. You can always just say in a positive, upbeat manner, hey, I'm moving on to the next growth opportunity. Um, now, via communication or method to tell your boss, I would I would try to do it in person if possible. If you cannot do it in person, um, do it by phone call. If you can't do it by phone call, email is the best. Don't text. I feel like that goes without saying, but like texting is just so... Mm, it's not it's not the vibe it's just like if someone were to break up with you via text message it's not kind it's not considerate and you almost feel like they don't really care um if you send like a professional email with your resignation letter that's great um but sending a text like hey i want to quit i'm quitting tomorrow my two weeks is you know next friday okay like that is a little it's not as professional as you could be for me i would i would try and do it face to face. If you don't feel comfortable with that phone call or email, talk to HR, um, anything and everything. (laughs) Um, maybe your coffee shop doesn't have that. Maybe it's just a boss. I don't know if it's like more corporate than that, but usually bosses (laughs) are very understanding. They're also people too, and they hopefully want the best for you. If they don't want the best for you and want to keep a toxic environment or, you know, keep you working there so that you can do their dirty work or so that they can belittle and yell at you, that's not someone that you want in your life anyways. So if they don't want the best for you, see yourself out. Goodbye. Um, But quitting a job is really hard. I've always had like the mindset of like, we don't quit, we follow through with our commitments. And so taking the steps to actually transition to a different job or a different path, I would just try to be honest in the most gentle way possible. Um, And I wouldn't let anything else like come up in conversation stop you from doing it. Because if you've come this far, if you think, oh, like, I actually really want to quit, when they say things like, oh, can you actually like wait until next month or we're so short staff, we could really use you. Or maybe they're like, oh, um, 25 cent pay raise. Like have your reasons on why you're wanting to quit and hold them close to your heart and be like, these are the reasons I'm wanting to quit. Like 
if they say this, that, or another and try to like keep me here, I know that like I'm not going to uh, like settle for that. Now, if it is like I'm not making enough money, have a number in your head like, oh, I want to make $3 more or $5 more. I want a, a position with more managerial experience. Um, whatever it is, have it in your head and stick to your um, stick to your non-negotiables. Hey, this is what I'm wanting and I'm not going to stay for any, any less. So thank you to everyone who submitted your questions, your situations. I love reading what you guys are going through and how I can help in any way. If you thought my um, advice was different than your advice, drop it down below. I'd love to hear. And until next time, bye.